Welcome everyone to this course. In this course, you will be learning a variety of different topics, including animating a player, parallax background, we're going to be going through saving and loading, we're going to also be able to create an, a very simple but nice AI mob that's going to have nice control on it, and then lastly, we're going to have collectibles. And as a bonus, which actually it's a bonus in the beginning, we'll be going through tile maps and how to set up a tile set. In our animated player, we'll be going through a few different topics, so we'll have animated sprite, We'll have an animation player and we'll be going through physics, simple physics. In the parallax background, we will be doing parallax mirroring and we'll be discussing how to actually properly do that. In the saving and loading, we are going to be using a very nice Godot built-in function, which is going to allow us to access files. And then through that, we're going to be also creating JSON files with it through dictionaries. So we're going to be discussing dictionaries as well as how to convert that into a JSON file. And for the simple mob AI, we're going to be going through Area 2D. This is a very powerful tool in Godot that I would very much suggest you learn very quickly. It's very, very useful for a variety of different things, as you will see as we kind of go along in the course. And lastly, collectibles. We're going to be going through timers, which is just a simple timer. And then lastly, we have tween. Tween is a very simple way to animate things in Godot. And I'll be going through a few ways to do that. And it'll be very fun. So stay tuned for that. And it'll be really exciting. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is obviously download the actual engine, right? And so Godot is actually very unique compared to other engines where the download process is actually very, very simple and very quick. So all we're going to have to do is download Godot. We're going to have to go to download latest. We're going to go, we are going to use uh, Godot 4. If you're watching this video and you uh, go to four point something is out. You can download that. It shouldn't be too different. It should be pretty much the same. Now go to 3.5 and, and previous versions might be slightly different in the code. So I wouldn't suggest downloading them. I would suggest downloading 4.0 and further. So let's download 4.0. We just click that, download this. You will get a zip file. So let's minimize this and see what we get. Let me close that. So this is the zip file you should get. If we open this up, we will see two things. We will see the, let's actually just drag these out and see what we have. So I'm, I'm not going to replace this. I'm actually going to skip that because I already have it. So we have Godot 4. This is for the Windows version. And then we also have the console. Now we don't need the console, so we're going to delete that. And now we have the Windows 4 stable. We're just going to launch that. And there you go. That's Godot 4 downloaded. So as you can see, it was very quick. It took a minute and that's a lot easier than Unity or Unreal Engine. So the next thing we're going to want to do is actually create a project. So now, uh, as you can see, these are my projects. So the, if you, once you've created a project, they will always show up here. We have the about, um, we don't have to worry about that. We have asset library projects. We're not going to worry about this either, but it might be useful for you later on. Maybe once you finish watching this video, essentially this is a public repository for people who actually use the engine and make their own projects and want to share it with fellow developers. So if you want to actually download your own um, demo or upload your own demo, that would be here. So there is also a website you can do that, which would be really cool, but this is also built into the Godot engine. So aside from that, we're going to be going to local projects. This is going to be on your actual um, computer. So we're going to go hit new project. We're going to choose where we want this first, and I'm going to put this in my desktop. So you can choose wherever you want to put it. And let's name this new platformer game. And here, we are going to have to create a folder. So we have the option to create folder. It has created a folder on the side, as you can see, right above my head. And now we have a few different options. We have forward, mobile, compatibility. Now, what are these? So forward is essentially for 3D graphics. You can read it. It's basically just for 3D. If you're doing a 3D game, you do forward plus. If you're doing a 2D game, you would do mobile. Now, it's not only for mobile because it does support desktop, but it is basically just for 2D. Now, compatibility, I believe, is still um, in kind of beta testing and it has a few bugs, and it's but it's basically for 2D as well. So, I would suggest we're just going to be using mobile. At the time of this video, um, if none of these are available, or if they change a little bit, just look for the one that's more suited for 2D. But obviously, this is just the renderer, so we're not going to worry too much about it. And for the version control, you can just go click None, and that's it. So now let's create an edit, and it's going to create our project. There we go. And we're left with a complete blank slate. And as you can see, our screen is completely blank. Let me explain. Let's go through a few things. So on the top, we have 2D and 3D. So as you can see, when I click the 3D, it shows us kind of a 3D plane and we have 
four or three planes, right? So we have the blue, red, and green, and that just signifies that we're in a 3D plane. And if we go to 2D, well, everything kind of becomes 2D. So we also have script. We don't have any scripts yet, so they're completely empty. We have asset library. That's essentially the library that you guys saw before. This is things that is, it's a basically a public repository. It's very useful, but uh, at the in the moment, we're not going to use it. Okay, next up is the actual scene. So let's get started with our actual scene. So in order to actually run something, we need a scene. What is it? What is a scene, you might ask? Well, a scene is essentially something that we save in our project. So on the left here, we can see that there's a bunch of nodes and things. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click 2D scene. We're going to rename this by double clicking. We're going to type main. We're going to click uh, control S and we're going to save it into our main uh, folder. So this is our main folder, which is res dot uh, slash slash whatever. And there we go. We now have our main scene. Now we can go to the top right. You see a run project or F5. We can click that and we're going to select current. And this will just run our project into main. And so now we've run our first project in Godot. Awesome. Next up is going to actually be adding things to that scene. So what do we want to do? Well, first of all, we have to plan what we actually want to do, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually create a uh, menu screen. So to do that, we're going to add buttons. And when we go into um, the top left, we have a plus button. What is this? This is an add child node. So Godot works in nodes. If you don't know what nodes are, they are basically just objects essentially that we can add to our scene and edit things really easily. So on the top here is a 2D node. A 2D node is something that just holds a position and is allow it allows us to have a 2D thing on our screen. So next up, we're going to just add to this node. What we're going to add is we're going to add buttons. So that will be under the control section. If we go to a canvas item, you'll see that we have two things. We have control node and control. So these are this is going to have main, most of the stuff that we're going to be using. So we have a bunch of cool things that you can look through. We have animated sprite, audio listener, back buffer, bone. We don't have to worry about these ones. Um, CPU particle, that's for particles. Those are very complicated, so we're not going to worry about them too much. We have camera 2D and a bunch of other really cool things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find our button that we want to add. And if you can't find it, like I can't find it right now, we're just going to search it up. So we search a button and we have a few different options. So the first thing is to look through them. So we have button, check button, color picker, picker button, menu button, option button, link button, and texture button. And of course, my kind of favorite, touchscreen button. So this is really good for mobile, so we're not going to touch this. And next up is our button. This is one of my defaults and now we also have texture button texture button is usually used essentially for something let's say you've created a texture of a button outside of godot like you have a ui expert who has created a button for you and you want to use that in your Godot project this is the node that you would use but for us in this project we are going to be using a standard theme button or a button so let's create this let's add it and if we zoom in a little bit we can see our button and kind of just make it a little bigger and zoom back out and we can kind of drag it to the middle. And now what we can do is add text to it on the right. So on the right, we can see that there is text and we can just add to it. And we can now see that we can add text and we can add play. So let's add two buttons. So to duplicate it, what we can just do is control D or you can just right click and control uh, duplicate. So this one will be the play button. So let's see, rename that to play. This will be our quit button. So we're going to rename this to quit. And right here, we're just going to drag this down. We're going to type the text as quit on the right. So you can see the text has changed to quit. And if I zoom in, I should be able to see both of them now. So the first thing we're going to do is add a script to the main. So to add a script, as you, on the top left above me, you should be able to see it. Attach a new script. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at these. So we have templates. And essentially, what we want to do is just add the template node default. This is going to basically add a completely new script that has nothing on it. Um, the language at the moment, it, we only have GD script. If you want more languages, I'm pretty sure you have to export that or import that into Godot. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to be using GD script and the path what, that we wanted. You can change that here if you have more folders. However, we don't have any folders yet, so we're just going to save it in main. So let's create it. And now we're going to save. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to delete these. We don't need any of those functions. So now all we need is extends node 2D. So let's go to our uh, quit button. And what we'll do is we'll go to the uh, scene and click our quit button. 
And on the left, or on the right, sorry, we have Inspector, Node, and History. So Inspector essentially allows us to change all the settings of the actual button and how it looks, all, all those things. So we have Layout, um, we have Transform, we're all able to change the transform of it, the size, position, scale, uh, rotation, we can rotate it around. Um, I, I would definitely recommend if you don't understand any of this, definitely play around with it. It's really cool to kind of just play around with things and see how it works. We have tooltip. This is actually kind of cool. If you hover it, it'll, it, it'll perfectly explain it. Um, it's essentially when I hover it, it'll give me a something. So let's type in, this is the quit button. Now, if I play this and I hover it, it'll give me a, a tooltip. It'll say what this is. This is the quit button. So we don't want that in our game, so we're just going to remove that. But it is very useful for other various things, right? So we have focus, a bunch of other things that you might not understand, but that's okay. So for now, just kind of play around with things that you might understand um, and let's move on. So the next thing we're going to do is go to node. And now in here, we have signals and groups. So groups, we're not going to use. Um, however, there are good videos on it. I would definitely recommend learning it. It is a very powerful tool in Godot. So aside from that, we're going to, we have signals. That's what we're going to be focusing on and using. So signals are essentially when I click the button, I want something to happen. If I want something to happen, I have to send a signal. So I have to send the signal from this button to the script. So how do I do that? Well, I do that here. So how do I actually do that though in here? So what I can do is I, I basically look through all these signals and look for something. So this will tell me, this will send a signal when the button is pressed. This will send a signal when the button is goes down. This will send me a signal when the button goes up, etc. So there's a bunch of different things that are in here that are very useful. So the first thing we're going to do or we want is pressed. So we want to check if the button is pressed. To do that, all we do is connect, uh, double click it. We double click pressed. This will pop up. And now we can just connect it to our main script. So we just, we don't have to change anything. We just um, press connect. And now in here, we now have a function that goes from quit to script. So in here, what we'll do is we'll actually program the quit function. So to do that, we're just going to say get tree dot quit. And now all we have to do is play and test it. Awesome. We now have a quit button that works. So every time I play and I quit, click the quit button, it will now quit our game. So that is how we create a super simple quit button. All we have to do is get tree. This will essentially get the entire tree and then quit. So actually explain that a little bit better. So when we play our game, we have on the left, we have remote or local and remote. So local are the things that I'm locally changing. I'm changing in here, right? When I play the game, remote is like, the actual thing that is happening in the game, right? So here's our main function that we have. And if I have something else, it'll also be in here. So root is the root of the entire game that I have. Now above this, that it, what it doesn't show is tree. It's not really above it, but it's more so everything. So the, this entire thing is tree. So what we're doing in our script is we're getting the tree and this entire thing, and then we're gonna quit, right? So that's how we essentially use quit the, the game. Awesome. Next up is play. We want to actually have a play button. So to do that, we're going to have to create another scene. So here on the left, right next to my head, you should be able to see main.scene. Now we want another scene that will be our world. So this is going to be our world. So we're going to save it as world. We're going to save it. We're going to save it in here. And now next to my head, you should be able to see world. So we're going to basically take our play. We're going to connect it to our main and we're going to Go to world. Now I want you to try connecting the signal into your main function and pause the video. So pause the video, try that. And then, uh, if it doesn't work, unpause the video and I will now do it. So let's do it. So let's go to pressed. Let's go to the node signal pressed and let's connect it to our main. So in here, we now have our play press button or function or a uh, signal. Sorry. Now, what do we want to do? We want to change the scene. So how do we do that? Well, there's a function where we can just say get tree. We'll say get tree and then we will say change scene scene to file or to packed now there's two different options which one are we going to do we're going to do to file to packed is something different that we don't usually use so we're going to do to file and we're going to go to the world scene so essentially what we're doing is we're getting the tree and we're just going to change our scene which is the main into the file world right so we can see our world here and another way to change this 
but just a quick tip. If you wanted to change this, maybe you chose the wrong thing, what you can do is highlight it or just delete it. And we can select the actual thing that we want, like world, and we just drag it in. Or a third option is copy path and copy paste it. As you can see, that's the path of the world's file. So now what we can do is we can, um, let's actually be able to differentiate this by going to our world. And what we'll do is we'll add a node. We'll just add a label. So what a label is, is it's just text. It's basically just a, a label that actually adds, adds text to our screen. So we'll say this is the world. And then we'll save this, we'll play. And now what we, we can do is press play. And now we change to this is the world. So we've changed our scene to the world scene. Awesome. 